We've all heard tales of terror that have chilled our spines. But have you heard about the terrifying tales of 10 fierce female demons from various cultures and mythology? From the jealous and raging Hanya of Japan to Echidna, the mother of all monsters in Greek mythology, these beings are the stuff of pure nightmares. Then we have Jahi, a demon of lust from ancient Persian texts, and Baba Yaga, that ambiguous figure from Slavic folklore who could either be your savior, or your doom. And if you think you're safe in the realm of the dead, think again. Amit, the ancient Egyptian deity, was there to mete out divine justice on the deceased. Finnish mythology brought us Agitor, the disease-spreading serpent, while Greek myths gave us Impusa, the shapeshifter under the command of the witchcraft goddess. And then there's Abazu, the demoness from Akkadian legends who brought only death and despair for newborns. And last, but certainly not least is Lilith, the first woman in Judeo-Christian theology, who chose the company of demons over her given partner. And the most chilling part about all of them is, well, hold on to your seats, because that's a tale for another moment. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? I'm Caesar and together we're going to delve into the intriguing and the mysterious, the stories that send delicious shivers down your spine. And guess who's with me today? The incredible, the insightful, Sonia. Hey there. Super excited to be here, ready to unravel these mysteries with all of you. Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our thrilling episodes. Welcome to the Curiosity Wonderland. Get ready for a mind-blowing journey. So what comes to mind when you hear the word demon? Chances are, it's not a green-tinted female figure consumed by jealousy and rage. But in Japanese lore, that's exactly what we have. The Hanya, or Oni as they're known, were once human women who transformed into demons at the end of their lives. That's fascinating. What causes them to transform? It's believed that these women are overwhelmed by their emotions, particularly jealousy and rage. These emotions are so powerful that they transform them into demons, known specifically as Kijo when referring to female demons. Wow, so emotion has a lot of power in this folklore. Are all Hanya the same, or are there different types? There are actually three grades of Hanya, Naminari, Chanari, and Hanari. The Naminari are the least evolved of the demons, resembling human women with tiny horns. They dabble in dark magic and can even summon other, more powerful demons. The good news? They're not doomed to be evil forever. If they find their lost humanity in time, they can return to their human forms. That's a bit of a relief. What about the other two types? Well, the Chunari are a more aggressive breed. They have tusk-like fangs, longer horns, and a more violent use of dark magic. But they're vulnerable to Buddhist prayers. The Hanari, on the other hand, are the most vicious of the three. Let's just say you wouldn't want to cross paths with one of them. Yikes, I'll keep that in mind. So these Hanya are representations of emotion, of transformation. That's quite a different image from the typical red, horned demon we often imagine. The Hanya aren't just terrifying figures in folklore, they're a significant part of Japanese culture and history. They're even represented in no theater through masks that depict their likeness. But let's move on to a different culture now ancient Greece. Here we meet Echidna, a demon who was part woman and part snake. Wait, Echidna, isn't she the mother of some really famous monsters? That's exactly right. Echidna and her mate Typhon were responsible for some of the most iconic creatures in Greek mythology. They had Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guards the gates of the underworld. Yes, and didn't they also have the Hydra, the Chimera, and even the Sphinx? Yes, all those terrifying creatures were their offspring. Their existence had a huge impact on Greek culture and mythology. The most famous heroes of Greek mythology, like Heracles, were known for hunting these monsters. It's interesting how these demons, whether it's the Hanya or Echidna, are so intertwined with the cultures they come from, isn't it? Absolutely, they're not just scary stories, they're deeply rooted in the historical and cultural fabric of these societies. Now, moving on, we have another female demon from ancient Persian texts and the Zoroastrianism faith, known as Jahi. Now, Jahi is quite an interesting figure. She was a demonic embodiment of lust and temptation, said to be a close consort of Araman, the Zoroastrian god of evil. She could tempt men and lead them to their death with a single glance. She's also tied to a unique myth in Zoroastrianism about the origin of menstruation. Really? How does that work? 
The story goes that the god of good, Ormuzd, had kept Aram in dormant for over 3,000 years, creating a period of peace. However, Jahi was able to awaken Araman by sexually arousing him. As a thank you, Araman gave Jahi the ability to menstruate and demanded she share it with all mortal women. That's an interesting take on the origin of menstruation. So what about Baba Yaga, I think I've heard of her before. Ah, yes, Baba Yaga. She's a common figure in Eastern European Slavic folklore. However, her characteristics vary quite a bit. Some view her as purely evil, while others see her as a helper, or even a group of three female demons. She's often depicted as a hag who flies around in a mortar, wielding a pestle. It's amazing to see how varied the depictions of these female demons can be across different cultures. They range from figures of intense emotion, like the Hanya, to lustful temptresses like Jahi, to shapeshifters like Baba Yaga. It really gives you a sense of how wide-ranging and diverse folklore can be. Now, Baba Yaga's reputation greatly depends on who you ask. Some of the darker tales suggest she uses her powers to control and manipulate children. Others, however, paint her as a helpful guide for lost travelers in the forest. Many believe that her image was used by parents to keep their children in line, a sort of boogie woman tale. So, she was a kind of monster under the bed for Slavic kids, huh? Exactly, but let's move on to a different kind of monster now, the Joragumo from Japanese folklore. These creatures are spider demons with the ability to transform into beautiful women. Spider demons that turn into women? That's a unique twist. Indeed, they would use this form to entice unsuspecting men. Once the men let their guard down, the Joragumo would reveal their true form and kill them. Some stories even suggest that they commanded smaller spider demons. So, the Joragumo are not just powerful in their own right, but they also have a whole army at their disposal. That's right. However, it's said that their seduction can be overcome with the prayers of Buddhist monks. But, even though the monks could fend off the Joragumo, the men they seduced would still yearn for them, knowing what they truly were. Now, we've discussed some pretty fearsome figures so far, but let's take a look at Amit, an intriguing figure from ancient Egypt. Oh, I love Egyptian mythology. What does she look like? Amit has the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion, and the hindquarters of a hippo. It's believed that these creatures were chosen specifically for their association with danger and strength. That's quite the combination. What was her role? Interesting enough, Amit's primary function was not to cause chaos but to administer divine justice. She played a crucial role in the judgment of the dead. Divine justice? How did that work? Well, when someone died, their heart was weighed against the feather of truth by the god Anubis. If the heart was lighter or equal in weight, the soul could enter the afterlife. If the heart was heavier, it was fed to Amit. That's a harsh punishment. So, she wasn't exactly evil, just, consequential? Exactly. And that fear of consequence kept many Egyptians hoping they'd never meet her. Now, moving on to Finnish folklore, we meet Agitor. She's a figure of terror that resides in the forests of the Pojola Mountains. Sounds ominous. What do we know about her? Well, Agitor is quite an enigma. Her story weaves through Finnish folklore, with her name appearing in various forms. But, as we'll see, her legend holds a certain terrifying allure. Now, Agitor seems to be a real figure of terror in Finnish folklore, with her hair and breasts described as extremely long. She was considered the bringer of disease, and she also controlled gnomes. That's an odd combination, don't you think? Controlling gnomes and spreading disease? Quite so. It's also interesting to note that she oversaw Lempo, the god of love and fertility. So, she was tied to both love and pestilence. You know what's interesting? In many cultures, we find this fascinating intersection of love and death, or fertility and disease. It seems to be a common thread in folklore worldwide. That's a keen observation. The world of folklore is indeed full of intriguing dichotomies. Now, let's shift our focus to Greek mythology with a demon named Impusa. She served under Hecate, the goddess of witchcraft, and was known for her shapeshifting abilities. Oh, another shapeshifter. But I assume there's a catch? Indeed, there is. Her true form could be recognized by her single leg of copper. No matter how she shifted her shape, that leg remained the same. I wonder if that was a design flaw or a divine joke. 
Greeks had a sense of humor too, right? They certainly did. In fact, Impusa made appearances not only in legends and lore, but also in several Greek comedies, like Aristophanes's The Frogs. Continuing with Impusa, her comedic appearances don't overshadow her true nature. She was known to seduce unsuspecting victims before revealing her true form and devouring them. That seems to be a common theme with these demons, doesn't it? The lore and the kill. Indeed, a cautionary tale of appearances being deceiving. Now, moving on to a rather feared demon known as Abazu. Originally from Akkadian legends, her reputation spread all the way to Greece and the Middle East. Well, that's quite the reach. What made her so feared? Abazu was said to be infertile, and that caused her to harbor a deep jealousy towards mortal women who could have children. This envy transformed her into a demon tasked with causing miscarriages and killing newborn children. That's truly horrifying. How did people protect themselves from such a demon? According to the Testament of Solomon, King Solomon himself ordered Abazu to be captured and punished for her crimes. The king's actions provided some solace to the suffering mortals. That must have been a relief. It's fascinating how these stories often include a hero figure to counterbalance the terror of these demons. Speaking of vanquishing demons, Abazu was finally vanquished after ages of causing sorrow and grief. And that brings us to the last demon we'll discuss today, Lilith, the archetypal female demon in Judeo-Christian theology. Ah, yes. She's perhaps one of the most famous demons, isn't she? Yes, she certainly is. Lilith first appears in the Book of Isaiah and is also mentioned in various Jewish mythologies. She is said to be the first woman created by God, even before Eve. And unlike Eve, Lilith was created from the same ground as Adam, not from his rib. That's a distinction I wasn't aware of. And she wasn't fond of Adam, was she? No, she wasn't. She refused to submit to Adam, choosing instead to go her own way. As a consequence, she was banished from the Garden of Eden. And that's when she became a demon, right? Correct. After her banishment, Lilith mated with demons, becoming one herself. She gave birth to a host of demon children known as Lilim or Succubi, who wandered the world, seducing men and adding to their numbers. Oh, that's quite the legacy. It seems she had her own form of revenge. Indeed. These demons, her offspring, served as her vengeance against God and the Christian world for her initial mistreatment and banishment. So, there you have it, 10 terrifying tales of female demons from various mythologies and folklore around the world. From Henya's jealousy and rage to Echidna's monstrous progeny. From Jati's deadly lust to Baba Yaga's unpredictable character. From Joragumo's lethal allure to Amit's divine justice. From Agitor's disease-spreading serpent form to Impuza's shape-shifting seduction. From Abazu's heartbreaking havoc to Lilith's vengeful legacy. It's been quite a journey through the annals of demonic lore, hasn't it? Absolutely. And remember, these tales are not just about terror. They each reflect the culture and society from whence they came. They hold a mirror to the fears, the hopes, the beliefs, and the moral codes of our ancestors. Thank you for joining us on this eerily fascinating exploration. If you've enjoyed our descent into the world of female demons, make sure you blast that like button, leave a comment, and share this episode with your friends. Let's keep the conversation going. Yes, indeed. We're always here, ready to delve into the mysteries of our world and beyond. So, till our next episode, stay curious, stay vigilant, and most importantly, stay safe. Goodbye, everyone. The fascinating tales we've delved into today came from Listverse, in an article titled 10 Terrifying Tales of Female Demons from Across the World written by Selmy Angulo, published on October 27, 2023. If you want to read more, you can find the full URL in the episode description. Now, it's time for me to bid you adieu.